Perfect. Well, welcome everyone to this awesome uh, beginner Python study group session. Today, we're going to be talking about for loops and while loops. We'll also be talking about range functions, break statements, and a lot of other fun stuff. So today's agenda, we're going to start off start talking about study group progress, and then we're going to launch right into our live coding. We'll go through a review refresher of content that we've covered in the first few sessions. Then we'll go into an intro to loops. We'll talk about for loops, while loops, and then have a brief recap. All right, welcome to Beginner Python Study Group. So this is just a reminder that whether you're new to the Python programming language, if you're new to programming or computer science, or if you're here as a refresher, you are welcome here. Karen, FYI, that you keep a couple of times have unmuted, just um, FYI. Okay, so in the study group, we will actively code together in real time. We move at a slow and steady pace to absorb the material together. We will encourage others as we learn in a safe and comfortable environment, and I hope we're going to have a lot of fun. So we're gonna focus on the essentials of Python programming. This is our roadmap. So we're currently here. So we've covered a lot already. We've covered an intro to Python, simple data types, an introduction of functions, including inputs. Last session, we covered if else statements. And next session, we're gonna do a very fun session called Functions Revisited, where we're gonna learn about parameters, returns, among other things. We're really gonna deep dive into functions. And our collaborative sessions uh, that we have on Sundays will implement these concepts plus cover additional concepts, including using a library, which we just covered in the last session. The next one I think will cover recursive functions. And then our final session will cover text files. And this is a very interactive collaborative um, coding format. Um, Pajita, if you could please share the uh, um, links specific to registering for the collaborative coding sessions in the chat. That would be awesome. All right, so this is how we've progressed. I wanted to share this with everyone. So we're currently right here. We have one more uh, content session. If you've registered for today, you're already registered for next week. And Pajita will be sharing in the chat the other um, the separate links for the one this Sunday and the one that's on the following Sunday. I will also be sure that these are posted um, on the Slack channel and um, a Roman no code events page so everyone can be sure to sign up. So thank you, Pajita. So everyone can take a moment right now to, to register or um, um, take care of that maybe a little later today. All right. Time for live coding. So today, like our, with our other sessions, we're going to be using Google Colab Notebook. Um, here is the link, Pajita, if you could please post that link in the chat for everyone to join. If you would prefer to follow along in your favorite IDE or code editor, just make sure that you already have Python 3 and that code editor or IDE, IDE installed on your computer already. And this is just because of the amount of time it takes to install. Um, and some of our some of our popular IDE and code editors include Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, Anaconda, Atom, and Sublime Text. All right. So now we're going to go over to our Google Colab, and you're going to need to click the File button and then save a copy and drive. And then for me, it opens up in a new tab. And then we can work off this copy. So please let me know in the chat if you are all set and ready to proceed. So you can give me a thumbs up or a B.
Okay, perfect. All right, it looks like everyone is ready to go. So we will launch right in. All right, perfect. So welcome to session four, for loops and while loops. We are gonna start off with a refresher. I think we'll go through this reasonably quickly because I think these are concepts that um, we've covered off on um, quite a bit over the first few sessions. So comments um, are, comments help us communicate the purpose of our code. They're hidden, they'll not execute or print to the user. We write our comments with a hashtag and this is an example of a comment. The print function uh, prints or shows data to the user. We write it like this, the print with the parentheses, data is then placed inside the parentheses. Strings are a series of characters which include letters, numbers, and special characters, and we format them as shown here. Variables are pieces of memory that store our data. When code runs into a variable, Python retrieves the value assigned to the variable um, for the function or task being executed. So we create our variables either using a letter or a word or um, a few words separated by underscores. We use an equal sign and then we assign the value. Integers are whole numbers with no decimal points. They can be positive or negative. Floats on the other hand are numbers with decimal points. They can also be positive or negative. We're not gonna get extensively into functions today. So you'll wanna be sure to join us in a couple of weeks. I mean, sorry, in one week, you'll wanna join us in one week for functions. And so today, primarily, we're gonna be focusing on one specific built-in function, which is formatted similarly to the ones that we've covered so far. We can also define our own functions using the DEF keyword. Um, but again, we'll get into that um, much deeper in the next session. So feel free to take some time to review that um, after the session. Input functions ask the user to provide information. The input function is written as input um, open close parentheses. Note that the Python, note that the input function automatically converts the inputted values into strings, and this will be important in a little bit. So this is an example of writing um, an input function. Concatenation is important. For the most part, we've done concatenation with these plus signs, but I also wanted to share with you that you can also put strings and uh, variables together by separating with a comma. And we're gonna see an example or two of that later in the session. So constructor functions, we're using string int float constructor function. Um, this will construct the string integer or float type. This is known as casting. So in this example, we took a float and we constructed it into an integer. And this, uh, we constructed a float from an integer. So this next session section will be important for today. It's um, logical conditions. So we use this quite a bit in the if else statements um, discussion. And with logical conditions, we compare two values and Python evaluates whether the condition is true or false. With an if else statement, Python will take the result true false and then proceed with performing whatever action the program asks it to do. And we write our different logical conditions separated by double equal sign if we're seeing whether something is equal. And we wanna make sure we remember that uh, with variables, if we're assigning a, a value to a variable, we're using one equal sign, but if we're comparing two var var uh, values, we're gonna use a double equal sign. So, and I shared so we went through some examples um, last week together. So if statements, we evaluated whether a condition was true or false. If it evaluated a true, an action was performed. And with an if, if else statement, we, we do the same thing. So the if uh, evaluates this condition. If, it's, if the if condition is false, um, if it evaluates the false, then we move to the else statement. So it would execute this code instead. And if else is, sorry, if 
elif else statements, same thing. It starts with the if condition. If that's true, it executes this code. If it's false, it moves to the next one, evaluates this condition. And if both are false, it evaluates the, um, it goes to the else and executes this code here. And we'll review this again um, a little bit later in the session. So Boolean operators, we use um, the AND or the OR operator to evaluate some different conditions. So the AND operator, both uh, Boolean values must be true for the condition to evaluate to true. In this example, we use the OR operator. So only one of these conditions needed to be true for the code here to execute. All right. How's everyone doing with their review? I know I went through that really quickly for the sake of time. Um, is everyone good? Okay. Okay, perfect. All right. So we're gonna move to some new material today. So introduction to loops. So a loop executes a block of code repeatedly. In Python programming, we, we use two types of loops, for loops and while loops. So the difference between the two, for loops execute a block of code by a specific, sorry, by a specified number of times. And while loops execute a block of code repeatedly for as long as the statement's condition evaluates to true. And we're, we'll learn a little bit more about that in a moment. So just some basic terminology just to help us out. Um, a block of code is the code indented underneath the, I wrote for loop, but for a while loop. Um, iterate means to perform a given task repeatedly. All right. So for loops, we're gonna start off with some for loop fun and for loops execute a block of code by a specified number of times. A for loop will execute the entire code block or block of code each time the loop runs. We use for loops when we know the number of times we wanna execute the block of code. So, um, we're going to focus today the session for there are different types of for loops or different usages usages of for loops but today we're going to focus on using the range function with for loops and so um, here we can see a for loop is written with a for statement so we have the word for and then we have an iterator variable the word in and then we have our range function with a number here. This is going to indicate how many times we're going to want the loop to run. So the range function is a built-in Python function. It loops through the code by a specified number of times according to the number placed between the parentheses. So this, would, this code would ex execute five times in this loop. Okay. All right. So if we think about a world without for loops, um, here's an example of a string. If we wanted to print this string five times or 25 times or whatever it might be, we would have to copy and paste the print function with the string inside, we, we might do it that way a number of times and it can be a little bit tedious. So with programming, we want to make life as easy as possible. And so instead we use a for loop to execute a block of code. And so the following example is a for, includes a for, sorry, for statement, 
the iterator var variable, which we're using y, and we're using the word in, we're using range, and we're going to execute it five times. So here we have the print statement. It's going to go through this loop. It's going to read, Python will read this, it'll print, and it will go loop around like this five times until um, Steph, the string Stephanie prints out. I also want to highlight here that although we're using I quite a bit in this session, we can put whatever iterator variable we want to put here. We could call it, you know, kitty cat. We could call it name. We could call it whatever we would like. Um, so today we're probably going to be using the I a lot, but um, based on what your 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 project is, you can choose other names for it. All right, so let's run this code. And it does take a moment for the collab to connect the first time that you click run, but you can see that it does print out Stephanie five times. Okay, so we're going to practice um, coding this together. So we're going to start with four, and then we're going to do name in range, and we can put whatever number we would like here. Oops, sorry about that. And then we add a colon. You hit return. For me, it automatically indents and then do print. And then we want to put a name here. And um, would anybody like their, would anybody like their name added to this? Whoever's first. Who should we say hi to? Just let me know in the chat. Lily, okay. We'll say hi to. Really. All right, and then we run that. And as we can see, the loop has printed Lily seven times. How'd everybody do with that first for loop? Beautiful. All right, perfect. All right, so a little more about using the range function just so we can get a better understanding. So the following example uses a range function with a, very, with a value of 10 between the parentheses. So as we can see here, when the loop runs through the first iteration, the first number to print will be zero. And this is because the range function actually starts with zero by default. So here we're just doing for i in range 10, print i. So this is going to start counting when we first print it. It's going to start with zero. And then the next time it goes through the loop, it'll print one and it will keep going through until it is printed. 10 number, the first 10 numbers in the sequence. Um, also keep in mind, each time the loop runs, the value counts up by increments of one by default. So like I said, it'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so does that make sense to everyone? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Perfect. All right, so let's run our example here. And as you can see, it prints out one on each line. It, it starts with zero and prints the first 10 numbers in the sequence. So let's try running, let's try writing this code ourselves. So we do four i in range, and we don't have to necessarily do 10. Um, we could do whatever number we would like. Why don't we do, it's 14 colon and then print i. Now, when I go to print this, 
What is the last number in the sequence going to be? Let me know in the chat. What's the last number that we'll print out? 13, perfect. So as you can see, it starts with zero and it prints out through 13. Great job, everyone. Awesome, great job. All right, so we'll go through some more examples. So yeah, this, so this is a, this is a, um, it, it is reading it as a number, um, integers, so. Um, all right, so in this example, we're gonna write a for loop that starts with one. So as we learned, it defaults with zero. So if we want to start with one, there's a couple of different things we could do, but this is one example of it. And then we're going to count up to 10. So in this example, we want it to the sequence to print. So it starts with one and then it goes all the way down to 10. So to do that, we'll do four I in range 10, but here we're going to do some math that way I, the first time it runs through the loop will be a zero, but you're adding a one. So it's zero plus one. So you're printing zero plus one. That will print out here. The second time it goes through the loop, it'll be one plus one. It'll be um, one plus one, which is two, and it'll keep going through the loop that way. So um, I did share this um, very briefly here as a reminder. So we run that code. And as you can see, it prints one through 10. So let's practice writing this together. So we'll do four I in range 10. What number should I put here? Um, let's try doing something different. What number would someone like here? Not too high though, but <laughs> not too high. Anyone? Five. Okay. So then we'll print. We'll do I plus one. So we execute, and you can see it prints one through five. So is everyone doing okay so far? All right, so this one, we're gonna get a little bit, um, we're gonna start bringing in some uh, variables and, and start to do some things. So um, here we're going to write a for loop that starts with 10, but then we're gonna count down to one. So we're gonna take what we just did, but we're actually gonna work in reverse. So to do that, it's helpful that we create a variable. We're gonna, we're gonna call this one countdown. You can call it whatever you like in your own um, notes. And then we'll assign an integer value of 10 to it. So here we go. We have a variable countdown equals to 10. Now we're gonna do our for loop. And so we do for i in range, but we're gonna put countdown here. And so as we know, because countdown is um, equal to the integer 10, we can think of this as the number 10 is here. Then we're going to print countdown. So the first time it runs through this loop, we're in the loop now, as you can see, because these two lines here are indented. The first time it runs through this loop, it's going to print countdown, it's going to, which is 10. So then it's going to go here. And I'm not sure how much we've covered this yet, but you can change the value within a variable by taking the variable and then setting it equal to the value that's within the variable um, here, but then doing something. So here we're doing minus one. So, so here we have, we have range, this is 10. We're gonna print, this is 10. And then here we're gonna take the variable countdown. We're gonna then set it equal to countdown, which is 10 minus one. So the value of countdown will then become nine. 
So then it goes back through into the loop again, and then it will print countdown, which is now nine, and then it will go back through nine minus one is eight, and it will keep going through all the way till it's done. Once it's counted down to um, one, then it moves outside of the for loop and it will print a statement that we put here. So let's run that code. And as you can see, it does 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then it prints, you're amazing. So someone asked this in the um, chat and I wanted to keep it simple um, today, but, but yes, absolutely. So this statement here, there's, a, there's kind of an easier or faster way of um, writing this. So what you can do is you can do countdown minus, sorry, minus equal to negative one. And what this will do is exactly what it just did. It's just taking, basically it's countdown and then it's still equal to countdown minus one, sorry, equals one, sorry about that. So you're doing countdown minus equal to one. Sorry about the confusion there. So that means the exact same thing as countdown equals countdown minus one. So these do, are doing the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna comment that out. Okay. So let's write this together. We'll do countdown equals to, what number should I put in here? Anyone? Okay, 19, that sounds fun. Okay, so countdown equals 19 for I in range countdown colon. And then this should be indented because we're in the for loop now. Print countdown. And then we'll do countdown equals countdown minus one. Or if you're comfortable, you can instead follow this format here. And then when you hit enter, it'll it still um, puts you in the loop. So I just click my delete key, and and then we do print okay. And then we run it, and you can see it does start with nineteen. It goes down by one and it prints out our statement. So is everyone good with that execution before we move on to the next? Perfect. All right. So although the range function defaults to a starting uh, value of zero, we can specify a starting value. So we do this by using a start parameter. And to do this, we'll do the four I in range like we normally do, but then we're going to put a number here that's a starting parameter. And then we'll do a comma. And then we're going to do what number we would like to end with, but you're gonna add one to that. So, and then we'll do print I. And so to write a for loop that starts with five, for example, and counts up to 10, we would write this as range five. And then this would be 10 plus one, which would be 11. And the for loop and range function, um, it stops at 11, meaning that the number 11 is not iterated or included in this. Does that make sense so far? Okay, good, great, perfect. All right, 
So write a for loop and range function with the start parameter of five counts up to 10. Let's just execute that code and we can see that it does print out. It starts with five, it counts up to 10 and then it stops. And so we're going to practice an example now together. So we're gonna write a for loop and a range function with the start parameter of 111, but we're gonna count up to 121. So we have four I in range. And what do I put for the first number? What do I put for my start parameter? 111, great. And then we put a comma and what would we put as our second parameter here where we end? So what would go here? So I'm seeing 122. And great, because if we wanted to count up to 122, we're gonna do 122 plus one. So that will be, we'll do 121 plus one, which is 122. We'll do a colon and then we'll print I, Let's go ahead and run that code. Let's see if it does what we asked it to do. And yes, it does. So it started with 111 and then we counted up to 121. So we did that correctly. Awesome job. How's everyone doing? Perfect. Awesome. All right. So next we're gonna write a for loop that prints high player followed by each player's number. So assuming like we're starting a game and the game is then saying hi to each player that you've put in. Um, and so we're gonna assume in this example that four players are in the game. So to do that, we'll do four I in range. We'll start with player one. Um, we don't wanna start with player zero. We wanna start with player one. And then because we're assuming four players, we'll put a five here. And then to print it, can anyone tell me why I did a string around the I here? Why did I construct a string? The answer is right here. Perfect. So reminder, the value of i is an integer. So to concatenate the value of i here with the high player string, we need to construct a string. So let's run this code. And you can see that it did run through the loop the four times. So it included all four players. So we're going to we're gonna write another an example where we're gonna follow some different parameters for this one. So we'll do four I in range. Can anyone tell me which two numbers should be in this example? So it says, assume eight players are in the game. So what are the two numbers that I should, how should I code this range? Okay, perfect. So we'll do one, nine. And then we'll do colon and then we'll do print. We'll write our string high player space and then we'll do plus. We'll construct our string with I. So your code should look like this. Let's run it. And as you can see, it prints high player to each of the eight players that are in the game. Did everyone get that desired result? Perfect. Yay. Is everyone having fun with our for loops? Let me know in the chat if you're having fun. Yes, awesome. Seeing smiley faces and yeses, oh, fantastic. Awesome. Perfect. So now it's going to get even more interesting. So, so now we're going to consider the fact that the range function 
currently or like it defaults basically to increment of one. So we can actually specify which increment value that we want. So to do this, we're actually going to use a third parameter. And I hope that some of you are hearing the word parameter a lot because we're going, this is kind of also helpful to our thought process when we get to the session next week because we're going to be using parameters within the parentheses of functions and we're going to do some really exciting things. So just a brief hint there that some fun stuff is coming. So um, today is really good practice for, for next week. All right, to write a for loop that starts with five and counts up to 10 by increments of two, this is how we're going to write it. So we already learned if we want to start with five and we want to count up to 10, that we would do five comma 11. So now we're going to do another comma and then we're going to put the increments number here. So we would like increments of two. So we'll put that here. So this is how your function will look once that's done. So the for loop and range function stops running at 11. 11 is not iterate, so we know that already. And um, so here's an example of how this looks. So we have our starting parameter, then we do the number we would like to end with, which is 10, but we add one to it always. And then we're going to do our increment number. So this is your basic format of how this should look. So let's do some examples. So let's run our code. And you can see that it does in fact start with five. And then it gives you um, every, it gives you an increment of two. So it's five and then plus two is seven plus two is nine. And it doesn't actually show nine because it, it ends at that point. So if we had put 12 here and we wanted to count up to 11, then we would also see 11 in this count. So let's practice a fun example. All right. So we'll do four I in range and what should my start parameter be based on the instructions? One, perfect. And so let's do one. So what should my second number be? 151. So that's our 150 plus one. And what should our third parameter be? Perfect. Awesome. Great job, everyone. And then we'll print I. So let's run that code. And we can see that the code did exactly what we would like it to do. And so it started with one, and then it's in increments of five from that point, and prints all the way up um, to the highest number. Yay. Someone said they're enjoying all the math behind this, and I agree. <laughs> I love math. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. So this is a little bit of an FYI. So we're not going to cover this in depth, but this is important to know, especially as you start to learn more beginner Python, more about for loops. But I, I just wanted to share some things. It's especially important if you're you know, if you're interested in you know, data science and that sort of stuff. Um, so for loops can iterate over a sequence such as strings, lists, dictionaries, tuples, and sets. And although we're not covering most of these concepts in the study group at this time, we want to share just a few examples with you. So this is an example of a for loop iterating over a string where we're just going to run the code in these examples for the sake of time. So as you can see, it iterates over the string. So the first time it prints out, it's just printing out the C. Then the next time it's printing out the A. Whoops, sorry about that. And so each time it's going through, it's 
printing this the first time, it's printing the A the second time, it is printing the spaces as you can see. So this next example, I thought this was kind of fun that we can have the uh, have it print out um, on one line instead of having it all you know um, up and down. So this is also an example of iterating through a string. But if you want the characters to print on one line, you can add a comma after the I and then do end equals the quotes, and that just puts it um, in this format. So I just thought that was kind of fun to share. And we can also here's an example of a for loop for a loop iterating through a list. So I'll hit, I'll hit the run button and you can see that as it goes through the list, it prints out each item within the list. So the first time it prints out women, the next time it goes through, it prints out who, and the next time it goes through the loop, it prints out code. And so it looks like this. And don't worry if you don't understand anything about lists, we have not covered it in the study group um, during 2021. But if some people are interested in learning more about lists, it's possible that we might do some more study group sessions in the future covering lists as well as some other fun stuff. So if anyone's interested in that, please let me know and we can um, consider that for sure. All right, we are making great progress. Um, so we are, we are ready now to start. Someone said in the chat, cats are amazing with the smiley face. Yes, they are. And somebody also said math is fun. Well, both those statements are so true. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> so awesome. All right. So we have, um, let's move into while loops. So they're, they're a little bit different, but I hope that at this point we're, we're very, um, well energized to, to go into this topic. There's going to be fewer coding examples, but the coding examples um, just involve some, some thought. So, so while loops evaluate a condition and checks it against each iteration of the loop. Basically what this means, while loops execute a block of code repeatedly for as long as the statement's condition evaluates to true. So basically, this condition here, if this condition is true, this code will just keep executing, whatever is here, will just keep executing for as long as this condition is true. If this condition was to become false, and we'll learn why that could potentially happen, then um, we will move on from that loop and continue on with the rest of whatever program exists. So we write a while loop with the while statement, a condition and a colon, and then we have the block of code underneath that. So I thought it was important, even though we did look at this earlier, to do a brief reminder on our logical conditions. So we compare our two values. Um, Python evaluates whether the condition is true or false. With a while loop, if the condition evaluates to true, the block of code will continue to execute. So like I just said, it will just keep executing through. So below is our list of um, logical conditions, and we have a example here. So we're gonna go through our example. So in this example, we create a variable called count, and then we set it equal to zero. And so here we'll do while the count is less than five, we're gonna execute this code. So through the first time through the loop, so it has print count, and then it will um, do count plus one. So as you can see, it starts with zero, but then it's gonna keep counting upwards. So I'm gonna run this because I think it's a little easier to explain once I've run it. So as you can see, the first time it runs through the loop, the zero, it will, the code will say while zero is less than five. So that's a true statement. We're gonna print what number is he in, what number is stored within count. So that's zero. And then we'll reassign the value within the variable count to count plus one. So now count will be equal to one. And then we'll go back through. And now one, is that 
less than five, that's true. So we'll go through the, the same thing over again. And so we'll just keep going through until it has finished counting. So you see zero, one, two, three, four, and then five. I counted to five, I'm done counting. So once it completed this, once um, it got to a point where count was equal to five, that statement became full, this condition became false, and then the code moved on to print this statement. Now, does that make sense to everyone? Um, let me know in the chat. Perfect. You guys are so amazing. Awesome. All right. So let's try running it. Let's try doing this ourselves. So let's create a variable. We'll call it count. You can call it whatever you would like. And we'll set it equal to zero. And then we'll do while count is less than, let's do 14 print count. And the next line we'll do count equals, let's do count plus equals one. So you can, if you feel more comfortable practicing this format, you can, but if you would like to try practicing this format, it does the exact same thing. And then when we hit enter, remember to hit your delete key. So the indent drops out of the while loop and then we'll do print and then we'll write our string. I counted to five. Okay. Let me run that. Oh, I should say I counted to 14. Let's try that again. Okay. All right. So as you can see that your final number should be here. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right, perfect. All right, how did everybody do with that example? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Whew. So now we're don't 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 worry. We're going to move into some larger code blocks. But um, a lot of the points that we're going to make are usually just within a few short lines of code. So there's a lot of code here. Don't worry. We will go through this together. So in session three. We wrote an if else statement to check whether the user inputted a number between one and 50. So we're gonna reevaluate this, um, this code. And um, so the print statement in this example that we wrote a few weeks ago, it told the user to try again, meaning if the user inputted a number that was either less than one or they inputted a number that was greater than 50, this line was executed and it says, your number is not between one and 50, please try again. But the code just ended there and there was no way for the user to actually like input another guess. The code just ended. And that was because we were just doing one small portion of what a program would be. But today we can actually write a while loop um, example. And that will allow the user to continuously enter their guess until a number within the correct range has been given. So it'll just keep going through until they input that number. It'll just keep going through that while loop. So let's look, so let's look at this example. So I'll try to keep the if statement up here as well. Hold on just one moment. Okay. All right. So in this example, we're going to start it off exactly the same. The user inputs a number. We convert it to an, we construct an integer from that number. And then we're going to, instead of an if statement, we're going to use a while loop. So we'll put while, and then we're just going to evaluate the exact same conditions that we evaluated here. And 
then instead we're going to print um, your number is not between one and 50, please try again. But we're going to give the user another opportunity to try entering the number. So you can see this here started us off, started off our user. They were then able to input a number. Then we move into the while loop. We're asking them, we're, well, we're evaluating the conditions first. And then we're asking them to try again, he, please input the number. And for as long as the user does not input a number within this range, they will just keep staying in this loop um, through that whole process. And you can see that this code here, we had to, we have to input it again here within that while loop. So assuming the user actually does enter a number within the range, you'll move out of that while loop and it'll print your number is, and it'll print out their number. So let's try running it. All right, so let's choose a number outside of the range. So I'll choose zero. And you can see it prints out, your number is not between one and 50, please try again. Okay, so I'll try 55. Your number is not within between one and 50, please try again, 77. And so I'll keep doing this, <laughs> you know, as long as the user does not input the number that they're supposed to, but now let's say they input the number 40. Okay, your number is 40. So it did what it was supposed to do. Um, does that make sense to everyone before we practice writing this code ourselves? Perfect. Such an awesome group. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of this and let's, we'll do our user number. Let's just do user num equals int input. Choose a number between one and 50 colon. Then we'll do while user num is less than one or user num is greater than 50 colon. You can see that it indents automatically. Print, we'll just type, please try again. enter and then we just want to take this that we've already written copy it make sure it is indented very important because we want the input function to appear within this while loop hit enter make sure you move back so it is in line with uh, the user num variable in the while loop here and then we'll do print well, i'll just copy and paste this for time And so it should look like this. So now we'll just double check that we did the same variable for each one. Looks like we did everything correctly. I think run it. Ah, because I copied and pasted. Make sure when you do this string that you adjust the um, variable to user num because it was storing the 40 that we had already put it up here. All right, now it works. So let's try running it and putting in a number outside the range. Try again, try again, try again. Okay, perfect. So it'll just keep running through until the user enters a number. Is everyone good with that? Did everyone get the desired result? Perfect. Awesome. All right, so this, I think this is our last example um, for today. So last session we did the door prize example. 
And for this, we did door prize. We wrote a door prize game with the if else statements. If the user did not select the correct door, the game ended with sorry, you did not select the correct door. Now, say for example, we actually wanted the user to be able to keep entering guesses until they selected the correct door. So they would get a prize in the end regardless. So that's what we're gonna work on today. So I included the example here of how we wrote that. And you can see that we did an if, sorry about that. We did an if statement, if user door equals equals reward door. So here we did a reward door. We chose a number be either one, two, three, or four. We did keep it as a string in this case. We didn't need to um, construct an integer to do any math or anything. So we, um, we just um, kept it as a string. And then we did a user door input, enter your guess. And then so if user door um, is equal to the reward door, it would print congratulations, you chose the correct door, you win a prize. Otherwise, it would go to this else statement and print sorry, you do not print the correct door. So we can actually use a while loop to encourage the user to continue selecting a door until they've actually found the correct one. So, all right. So most of the, a lot of the information here is exactly the same as last time. And only the information starting here will be different. So I actually already copied and pasted when we go to work on the example, I just copied and pasted the first four lines to save us some time. So let's just focus in on what we could do for a while loop that's different here. So when we did our if statement, we did if user door equals reward door. So for this while loop, I thought it might be best to do while loop. So we'll do while user door does not equal the reward door. So then we would print, sorry, you did not select the correct door, please try again. And then we would put that same input function as you can see, it's highlighting here because the text is, is exactly the same. So then we have them enter another guess. So for as long as the user does not, remember the um, quotation equal means is not equal to. So as long as the user door is not equal to the reward door, the user will stay within this loop. So they'll just keep looping through <laughs> this code over and over and over again. And then if this should become, if this condition should become false at any point and how it becomes false is the user does enter the correct door, it will break out of this loop and it will print congratulations. So let's run that. So there's a prize behind one of four doors, choose one of the following doors. So if we enter one, it says, sorry, you did not select a correct door, try again. We'll do four, still didn't get it, three, okay, two, congratulations, you won. So perfect. All right, awesome. So does that make sense to everyone? Awesome. Awesome. So let's try writing our while loop. So you can see I put a comment in here and you can just delete that out and we can do while user underscore door. We'll do is not equal to and how we write that is the quotation and then an equal sign. And then we'll do reward door colon. And then we'll print, please try again. And then we'll do that input function again. So it's identical to this. So you'll do user door equals input, enter your guess. Then that's all that needs to happen within this while loop. So we'll 
go back. So our code is back in line with our while with our uh, while loop here. And then we'll do print congratulations. You win. So let's go ahead and run it. Says there is a prize behind one of four doors. So let's try again. Oh, try again. And congratulations, you win. So, how did everyone do? Did everyone get that? Awesome. Yay. So, we got through, I think most of our coding for today. And we're gonna then go on to do a little bit of discussion and, and some further thoughts on this. So, um, so below I have another approach to solving the challenge. Um, it might not necessarily be an approach that you want to do, but it, it might be. And so I included in the study for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to show the while true. And you're gonna see this, you're gonna see this a lot in coding where somebody just says wild true colon and then stuff happens and, and whatnot. So I wanted to make you aware of that. So think about normally we're putting a condition here. And as we, as we know, like as long as that condition evaluates to true, the code will keep running. So if we have wild true, all the code will just keep running unless we tell it somehow to stop. So, um, so in this example, I have a while loop and then I put true here. So this will keep running. And then I put an if else statement in, um, underneath it. And so in this example, I did if, and then I did a condition here. So if the user door does not equal the reward door, it will then go through that same loop that we just discussed basically, um, or go through that same process that we just discussed of, sorry, you didn't select the correct door, try again, and they can enter another guess. And it will basically, as long as the user doesn't enter a door, it will just keep going through this process um, because of the true. But if the user is to match the user door, their door with the reward door, I put a break statement here. Um, does anyone, is anyone familiar with break statements or already? You can just say yes. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So basically the break keyword allows the program execution to break out of the while loop and continue through the program. So, Basically, it's saying, okay, the doors match. And now I don't want to be trapped <laughs> in this while loop forever. So they match the door. Okay, so now the code is going to break and go right over here and continue on with whatever is left in the program. Um, so it would then print out the congratulations message. So this is a, a different way of tackling the problem. Um, and so I wanted to do, I don't know if anyone has looked ahead, but I, I thought that it would be fun to kind of end with a, a short quiz time. So without running this code, what would happen if the print congratulations message was placed underneath the else statement. So here we have the break here, but like, let's say we move this congratulations message up to here. So that's the only difference between the two lines of code. Can anyone tell me in the chat what would happen? Does anyone know? Let me know in the chat if anyone knows. Yes. Someone got it. Okay. So what would happen is you would go into an infinite loop. That's why I said without running the code, because if you do run this code, it will repeatedly for all eternity print 
Congrat congratulations, you chose the correct door. So it'll print this same line of code over and over and over again and just keep going. So I, I have to ask, did anyone not listen to me and copy and paste and run the code and they're now stuck in an infinite loop? <laughs> Let me know in the chat if that happened to you. <laughs> and if it did, you can click runtime and interrupt execution and it will stop. So, <laughs> so yes. So ideally what we want to do is, you know, if, if we're doing a situation where there's a while loop and it's true, we want to make sure there is a way to break out of that code so we don't get stuck in an infinite loop like would happen in this example. So great job. I saw two people, um, two people got the answer. So wonderful. Okay. So just a brief recap and then we'll wrap up here. <laughs> Great job. Perfect. So for loops are used when we know the number of times to execute a block of code. The range function will loop through code by the specified number of times according to the number placed between the parentheses. And then while loops are used when we don't know the number of times, sorry, that should be times, to execute the block of code. While loops repeatedly execute the block of code for as long as a condition evaluates to true. So perfect. So someone's asked how I would fix it with a break. So, so here we have else and we did print, but we want to do it like we did here where we have the else break and then we have the print congratulations right here in line with the while loop. That way it is outside of this while loop. If we indented this, it would, you know, it would be inside and remove the break, it would be inside the while loop and therefore have an infinite loop. Does that answer your question? Perfect. All right, so up next, Pajita, if you could please share some of the links again, including the ones for the collaboration session. So please join us. Our next collaboration, our next uh, collaborative coding session is on Sunday, this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern US time. And I know a lot of you have been joining and we've been having a lot of fun coding together. Um, if, if you have been joining, please let everyone else know in the chat just what an awesome time we've been having um, doing some different coding projects. And so we really hope that you can join us at the next session. And um, also, please join us for our, again, final <laughs> content session on Thursday, September 16th. So that's next week at the same time. And we're going to cover our functions a lot more extensively. We're gonna learn more about parameters and we're gonna also learn about returns and how we can use them to write um, even more amazing programs than we're writing right now. So please join us um, on Slack. Pajita, if you could share that if uh, you haven't already. Yep, she just did. Perfect. <laughs> I'm saying final, but I'm putting that in quotes. So, <laughs> so we might be having some more sessions. So um, in, in a little bit, maybe a few, maybe in a few more weeks. <laughs> so um, please join us on Slack. So um, if we decided to do some more sessions beyond this, um, you'll find out in our Slack channel um, and be able to um, continue on. And also, um, if anyone has questions between sessions, if you just want to talk code, um, if you want to share your code with others, um, the Slack channel is a great place to do that. Everyone is very encouraging and supportive, and it's, we just have a great time. So please participate um, when you're able. And I also just wanted to say that everyone, excellent work today. Keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Um, practice all these concepts. Go through the, you know, the um, the review refresher. Spend some time on that. Especially spend some time reviewing our functions. Um, the function session is intro to function sessions that we did a few weeks ago is on YouTube. So please go back, spend some time refreshing on that, and you'll be all ready to go next week. So. I'm going to go ahead and um, 
close the session in a moment. I'm going to stick around for maybe 10 or 15 more minutes after the session, and you are welcome to stick around um, and, and hang out for a little bit. So thank you all so much for a really amazing session today. And I look forward to seeing you again in, well, I look forward to seeing you again on Sunday. And I also look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.